Okay, welcome back. Um, welcome back to the Futures Running Code. This is the second part of the Ionic Framework video that I did showing split view screen. The last video I used, um, what did I use? I used, I used UX to manage state uh, between the two tabs and to kind of manage the login. Um, so what I've done in this exercise, uh, what I've done in this example is I've completely removed UX and I'm going to show you how to uh, manage the login and pass state around using the new View Composition API. Uh, the View Composition API will be out with um, the version, version, the next version of View. But what they've done is they've uh, there's this plugin that you could use right here, this View Composition API plugin, uh, which will allow you to utilize View Composition API in View 2x applications. And since I'm not going to jump into the beta view at this point, but I want to show you the power of the View Composition API, um, we're going to um, fire up the View Composition API in this application. We are going to uh, do a fake login. We're going to store some state information. We're going to show you how to get access to the state information um, inside your app. So um, hopefully you find this enjoyable. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and let's get to it. So first we're going to start by importing the library. So let's get my uh, new terminal window. We're going to follow the directions here. Don't worry, I will have all of the links in the uh, description in the uh, YouTube video. So I think I have this installed. Well, that's not what I want to do. I think I have this installed already, but let's just um, go through the process so that we understand what's happening. Okay, we can get rid of this screen for now. We are going to load up the uh, view composition api we have that loaded and the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have access to the view composition api in our app so let's just um cut and paste we'll get the view composition api here and then since the plugin we need to kind of do this view use with it so we will go like this so <clears throat> now we have the view composition api we have view composition API set up in our application. And so the next step is to let's actually create our basically the equivalent of our hook. So we're going to go in here and we're going to use the same kind of naming convention um, where you say I uh, use. And so we're going to say use auth. Okay, so now we have use off, and let's slowly start to put let's slowly start to put together this file. Okay, so we clearly need to import view. Oh uh, no. And um, we are going to need to, we're going to need access to some imports from View Composition API. And the ones that we're going to need are these guys. And I will explain them as we start to use them. And then finally, because of the way that the API works um, in, in, in the plugin, we're going to have to um, tell this auth file we want to use the Composition API again in here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the state variables that we want to work with. And state variables that we want to work are these guys. So, um, in our state, we want to keep track of the user, the login state, and I don't think I use loading, but let's leave it in here anyway for now. And so these are the states we want to use. The ref on here is basically how we're going to allow all this stuff to be reactive. And so to actually get access to something in it, we're going to say state dot value dot user state dot value dot login state dot value dot loading but all of this stuff here will be reactive and so this is really how the magic is going to work all right so we have a function and we're going to set it as a default function so that it'll it'll end up going out the way we want it to do and this is a uh, this is pretty straightforward um, inside our function here there's just a few things that we need to do. So first, we definitely need to get access to our state. So we're going to say state, if I can type. And we're going to treat this as computed. Uh, we're going to treat this as a computed guy. So we'll go like this. And then off of the other thing that we need at a state is we need to be able to log in and log out. 
So um, for our login function, we're basically going to, just like we did in the last example, um, just by hitting enter, we're going to allow you to log in. And then we're going to create this fake user value that's going to have an ID of 100 and a name. Okay, and then once you log in, we're going to set the login state uh, to be true. And the next thing that we need is we are going to need a logout. And for logout, we basically want to clear out the user, and we also need to set the logged in state to false. So those are the things that we're going to need to get this guy going. Um, let's see, do I get this right? My state it is login, log out, and then we're going to return all this. So, what we have now, for those of you who are kind of familiar with hooks or whatever, is that we have a way to get access to the state, a reactive set of um, variables um, and then we have functions that are associated with this authentication uh, function. So I can now import this function into uh, basically wherever I need it, this set of functionality that keeps track of login state plus all associated, fun associated functions. I can import it wherever I need um, inside of my view application. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to check for the login state when the app application starts up and then allow people to use the login function to log in. So let's go back to our main router. So if you recall from the last video, if you didn't, uh, the links in, in uh, the link is will be included in here. The way we manage access to um, each path was before we had a, um, a before enter um, function that we had off here. What I've done is to kind of simplify it is what we're going to do is we're going to say before each route you're going to call our private function here to determine if you need to be authenticated. On the login route we don't need you to be authenticated so we're just going to call next and go along but for all the other routes we actually need to be able to determine if you're authenticated and that's what this is authenticated is for. So now we're going to start to use our um, hook that we created and so what we need to do, all we need to do is actually import the guy. So let's um, go up to our top here and let's import this, this uh, function that we just created. So now we have access to, to this function that we created called use auth. Sorry, I spelled that wrong. Use auth. Use auth declare, but not use, so we're going to use it. So we come down here. Now I can go into my um, my private route function and where did it go? Where did it go? Right here. We can do this. We can say what state you'll use auth. Right, and you see the values that we're getting back. And then I can go down here and I can say state that value dot logged in. I think that was, I think it is what is it? State that value yet yeah, logged in. And then that will that will get us the value from the uh, from our state to indicate if the user is logged in and if the person is authenticated and it's a route that requires them to be authenticated then they'll get routed to it otherwise it'll just go to the next okay so we can save that up here and then the other thing we want to do is we want to go into our login and let's uh, follow, basically follow, follow the exact same pattern so in our login function on do login we want to call our login function so we know that we need to get our login function from our um, hook that we created so I keep saying hook, it's uh, from my React stuff, from the view composition function that we created. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to import um, use auth. Uh, 
have to go to a different um, level now. So we get use off. And then inside of my function here, And you saw when I did that, I want this login function in, so we just do login. And we get the login function, and down here, we're gonna do, we're just gonna call it. Yeah, we're inside a method, so let's just call login. And that will call my login function. Uh, let's go to it so we can look here. And so what we have is, let's go back to our use auth. So use auth here is my login function. It will call this login function. It will set these values and when they were logged in. I'm not doing anything magical about putting in a weight or anything like that. But we're, we're setting the value. What we'll, what we'll do is we'll look inside um, the applications when it's running. And we will look, we'll use the view tools and we'll see that these values are actually being set appropriately. Plus the fact that if there isn't a user set, when we attempt to go into my router, um, if there's no user set, um, this will be false, and it will never let me get to my. Uh, it'll never let me get to this next page that login's trying to go to. So that's how we know it works. So let's test the login out first. All right, let's see if I did everything right. So like I said, there's no. We compile everything. Is my server running? My server is running. Let's see if this has worked. All right. So yeah, I think it worked. So let's take a look in my view tools. Uh oh. Let's put this into mobile. Shrink this over. View. Home. Right, it says we're logged in. So I believe that we are have to logged in. So let's let's just to confirm that we're logged in, let's do this. Okay, let's just um, the way we can check that if it's logged in is that we can, as you know, in our auth we keep track in our state we have a user value that is set. So if we're logged in then the user value should be set. So what we can do is we can go to our menu, which is visible. So let's go into menu. And what we're going to do is we are going to, right up in the top here, we're going to put in the header your email address to indicate that you've logged in. So I think that we should be able to do this date. dot value dot user dot name we want to display <laughs> and we are and we should be able to pull that value out of um, our use off so we come down in, in here and we're going to port it And then actually we need two things because in here we also want to um, activate our logout in the bottom here. So now we have our use auth and then what we're going to do is we're going to use this setup functionality that you get. Um, and what's cool about the setup is once you add the setup into your, let's just drop the setup in here. I'm at this. So what the setup will do is it will take these values that you return from setup and it will add them as data properties to this view component. So let's uh, run this. Let's save this again. And then what you'll see is if I go down into my menu, you see I have these additional values added in here. I have my user object and my login is true now added as part of the um, data object on my menu. So what I'm going to do is 
Oh, what is it? Oh, it's complaining about my the way I'm using this. Um, where to go? Where to go? Doesn't like what I'm doing up here. I don't think. Oh, so we want to get our user our username up there, and so we have state as my object. So state user name is what I want. So oh, it's re oh, I'm sorry, I've already kind of said the the value. So all I need to do is just go up here and say state dot user dot name. Put this back the way he wants it. And you can see my name is showing up here in the menu, so that's how we know we're logged in. And then we have our logout function, which got passed back to us also. And so what we're going to do is here in our do logout, we're just going to call logout. And because remember it's part of our data, so we have to say this here. Okay, so now if I come in here and I click on this, I have my name, I click logout. It closes the window, it transitions back to logout. I no longer have that information. If you look at the state, which you can still see from the menu, logged in log uh, login is false. My user object is empty, so that's why I transitioned back to the state. The last thing we want to do is you want to get rid of this uh, menu here. You should not have access to this menu when you're in this login state. So we can use this same value that we have here, and we can just come up here and say Let's just hide the whole menu. So I think we can get away with just using our uh, V if. So we'll just use a V if up here. So if state logged in is true, then we want to show the menu. So let's save this. Mm. Did I do that right? That should be working properly. Uh, I think, no, it's being hidden because I switched to logout state, and so it's trying to find something that's not there anymore. That's the problem. So I need to close the menu. I need to find the menu object, get the controller, close it, and then log out. Because otherwise, I'm logging out, which is taking the uh, menu out of the DOM. So that's what the error was. So the order does matter in this specific situation. So let's kind of reload this thing. I logged out. We log in. See, I'm logged in. I have the information here. Also, if I go and I look at view and I look at my menu object, put this down so we can see this. You can see my menu object. I have no error. Loading. Well, I need to fix that button. Um, login is true. I have my user object. Log out. Everything's clean. Logged out. User's gone. Menu's gone. No access to the menu. So the key thing that we're trying to show here is that we have this global state object that I can get access to anywhere by importing it and then calling the use auth and pulling off the, either the methods that I want in this situation or if I am in the router and I'm trying to check your authentication status I can just use auth and get to state and the state will give me this value will let me know if you're logged in or logged out and then when I need a function I can also use use auth I can get my function and call a specific function so this is a, a way to manage state without using Vuex it's nice and clean you can either call it and use it like this or if we go back to here in the menu how we use this setup function here you can um, use it this way and return the object that you want that will be treated as data properties in your object. So my menu object now has all these added properties that came from my state. Um, this was just a quick view of, <laughs> this is just a quick demonstration of how to use the View Composition API in Vue 2.0 um, using this View Composition API plugin. Um, I will post the code. This is the code from the last video that showed you the work using Vuex. Um, so it's your choice on if you like this kind of pattern of how Vuex manage state versus how, like if, versus if you like the way our view composition works. A lot of people are going towards view composition, so I think it's important that you know it. Um, 
Once again, you'll be able to check out everything here on my YouTube uh, channel. Um, the features written in code. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. And all the links that were used here, um, the link to where the source code is, the link about the View Composition API, um, and the link about the actual plugin will be posted here. Please, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Take care.